Hey, Derek. Hey, Taylor. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. It's good to see you. Good to see you. So why don't you introduce yourself real quick and tell everyone where we are. Okay. My name is Derek Wade. I'm the Assistant Dean here at the College of Architecture at Texas Tech University. This is our building and uh, this is the place where we study hard. So what's that sculpture behind you? This sculpture was designed by a man named Robert Bruno. Uh, Robert Bruno was uh, a professor here in the 70s. He ran our, our uh, building, uh, the shop down at the bottom of our building where the students make models. Uh, he was a sculptor. This was a sculpture that he worked on out in a, a field. And uh, when he got, uh, got just about finished with it, he looked at this and said, you know, I could live in something like this. So he proceeded from there to build a house on the rim of Ransom Canyon, uh, just east of town. So I'd like to show you more. If you step inside, I'll uh, show you what we've got here for the students. So why should students study architecture? Well, architecture is a fantastic career. Um, architecture is, uh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, it's, it's an optimistic career. Um, architects see chaos and they see opportunity. It's an opportunity for students to learn about taking things that seem dissonant and working them uh, into a solution where nobody has to lose. Uh, architecture is, is a, a career of building, not just the noun building, but more importantly, the verb building. Um, we, can, we teach how to build through using bricks and mortar and steel and glass perhaps, but uh, the, the nature of building and, and solving problems through design is what architecture is really about. And that can permeate things that goes beyond our built environment. So why Texas Tech architecture? Well, Texas Tech has a lot to offer. What is this room? This, this is our student lounge. I'll show you um, what's, where the students hang out when they're not having to study. I and mean, of course, sometimes they study here too. This is our newly remodeled student lounge. One of our alumni, Chris Huckabee, who is also one of our regents, the chair of the Board of Regents here recently. Uh, his firm designed this for us. Um, this is a place where students can come 24 hours a day. Uh, our building is open to them uh, all the time so that uh, if they need to study uh, late at night or early in the morning, they can come here. Uh, if they need to take a break, they can come to this room. Uh, we find that, that uh, partnerships are forged in places like this, and we're happy that uh, our alumni saw it uh, to, to benefit our, our students by providing this for them. You mentioned alumni helping with this room, but what are some of your other alumni doing now? Well, we have alumni who run architecture firms uh, in places all over the world. Uh, we have uh, one architecture alumni who studies, who, uh, who pursued our dual degree program in architecture and civil engineering, who is currently the American Institute of Architects president, uh, which is a big deal for us. It's, and we're, we're proud of him, proud, of, proud to have him there um, representing us and representing architecture at large. What is through these windows? This is one of our four shops. This is our digital shop. This is where we have tools such as laser cutters, CNC routers, drag knives, we have um, vacuum presses, various types of uh, computer operated machinery. These, these, uh, uh, this, this equipment is very, very precise. Um, uh, the students send digital files down to the staff that's here. Uh, things are cut for them. They can come down and participate in that if they like. Uh, their end product is sorted in drawers for them and an email is sent to them so they can come down and get the product so that they can put it together into whatever form their design calls for. Uh, we have uh, beyond this, uh, this shop into the next shop is our, our robotics lab. Uh, there are two robotic arms back there. A third one is coming. Uh, the third one will be large enough to 3D print in concrete. We also have a 3D print lab and a wood shop downstairs. There's a lot of hands-on learning, it looks like. Can we go see that wood shop? Yes, let's do that. Let's take the elevator. What degrees do you all offer here? 
We have uh, architecture degree, we have a dual degree in architecture and civil engineering, and we have a dual degree in architecture and business. What is on these walls? On this wall are syllabi from coursework, uh, courses that are offered here in our college, in our building, um, by the professors that are here uh, at the College of Architecture. And those drawings? On this wall is some work from our upper level students. Wow, they're really talented. They really are, yes. So let's go ahead and take the elevator down to the shops. What is the process to become an architect? The process to become an architect is longer than most people think it is. And that's a good question. I'm glad, I'm glad that you asked it. Um, the process to become an architect requires three things. Um, you have to have an accredited degree from an accredited program, which ours is. You have to do an internship for about two years, and you have to pass the architecture exam. Um, our program is based on a four plus two uh, scenario. You have a four-year undergraduate Bachelor of Science in Architecture, followed by a two-year master's degree, during which you can begin your internship. Um, after you graduate then, you're el eligible to take parts of the exam for the parts of the internship that you've, that you've already done, and then beyond that, you become an architect. That's a lot longer than I would have thought. I, so can we see the wood shop now? Yes, you can. This is the place where, where our students' ideas take real form. Good. This area looks really fun. What do the students do in here? This is where their ideas come to life. This is where um, students, this, this shop, um, as different from the other one, this one is only as accurate as the students are. Uh, these machines are operated by the students, uh, not by computers. And so um, if they mess up, it's, it's their fault, not the computer's fault. Um, this is where uh, they explore in three dimensions uh, in a way that's different from the computer and so that you can't zoom in and out when you work in, in, a, in, a, in a physical form like this. Um, safety is such a high priority that, we, uh, that we, we make sure that our students can do certain cuts and certain, certain um, maneuvers with machinery before they can use the shop. Um, and we have students who work here. That's what these students do. It doesn't look like they're working right now, I guess, but they, they do work. <laughs> and we're glad to have them here. That's a good part of our, of our program uh, because they can help monitor and help train our students. So how do you all handle safety in here? Well, that's what this is. This is, this, is a, this is a board that shows various or requires various different maneuvers to be made with various machinery within this shop. And if you can demonstrate that you can do all of these things and take a written exam um, online, then, then you can get uh, a sticker or permission to use this, use this shop. All right, so this is one place where students learn, obviously, but can we go take a look at a classroom? Yes, let's do that. Let's go upstairs, we'll take the elevator. Can architecture students study abroad? Yes, they can. Um, our third year curriculum offers study abroad in Sevilla, Spain. Uh, it's an opportunity for students to actually move, relocate to Sevilla for an entire semester. It's a little bit different than our summer uh, study abroad. Our summer study abroad uh, offers um, a variety of places where students can go with professors um, for five, six, seven weeks at a time. Um, this particular program, though, is an opportunity to be abroad for an entire semester. Uh, it gives you time actually to unpack your suitcases and, and begin to immerse yourself in the culture there in Spain. Uh, we have Spanish teachers that help us. Uh, students are able to take a full level, full load of classes also. So um, while they're here, however, they, stu they spend most of their time in studio. And we call our classrooms studios because of the amount of time that they spend in these, in these spaces and the kind of work that they do and the kind of culture that they develop in these studios. So there's one, there's a small studio for first year students in session right now. I'd like to show that to you. Thanks. It looks like they're just wrapping up. So this is a studio space. Um, it's, it's quite long. Three studios can, be, can take place at the same time in this large space. Our upper level studios have 12 to 16 students. The, First year studios have up to 25 students in each, in each studio. And what are the drawings on the wall? These drawings 
um, are of the body, and they're, they're using augmentations to represent different motions and things like that. So this, the, the first year students study form and they study the body and how those two things work together. And so they can use that information as they move into second year design uh, to help with what they're designing there. You mentioned studio culture, what is that? Studio culture is the kind of culture that moves from the classroom and into the culture of architecture. It moves into, into um, an office setting. Uh, studios are similar both in the educational setting and in, in the real work setting. Um, this is where uh, faculty may come and teach uh, three hours, three times a week, four hours, three times a week, four hours twice a week, depending on what year you're in. And the students will be here, here during that time because they're required to be here during that time. But during that time also, the, the professor will make their, their way around to work with each student for a few minutes. And the rest of the students can then work together. They can work collaboratively, they can work alone. Uh, but as, as they begin to move through their career in architecture, through their education in architecture, they, they, they move across the boundaries a little bit and work with each other and learn much more from each other uh, than they do from any single professor. So tell us a little bit more about your faculty. We have, we have a, uh, a diverse faculty. We have faculty from various places around the world. We have various uh, interests in our, within our faculty. We have some faculty who practice. We have other pra faculty who do um, mostly research. Uh, we have young faculty. We have faculty that are very experienced. Uh, there's a nice, a really nice balance of, of fresh uh, energy and experience. And it really is, uh, really is a good uh, wealth of experience for the, or wealth of opportunity for the students here. Well, thanks so much for showing us around. This building is incredible with so many learning experiences. But what is one final thought you want to leave us with? My final thought would be that what makes this college is the students. Um, the, the students who come here have a work ethic and have a, a drive that um, I don't see um, in other places. Uh, there's just something about the culture here at Texas Tech in general and specifically here at the College of Architecture. Uh, that, along with the desire of the student, or the professors, I mean, to uh, impart of what they bring to the table to those students, just develops a really nice chemistry. It's just really a, a great experience to be here. Thank you so much for your time today. Have a great rest of your day.